Welcome to Candid Conversation number 227. Today's question comes from Sonia in the Netherlands. Thanks for asking your question. She asks, how can we earn or lose crowns in heaven? And what good fruits bring you closer to the light in heaven? Okay, so basically we're talking about rewards in heaven. And that's uh, mentioned to us in 1 Corinthians 3, starting around verse 11. It talks about how, now for us today, in the dispensation of grace, um, we are saved by grace through faith. Once you trust in Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection as atonement for your sins, you're given the gift of eternal life. You receive the atonement at that time. So you have a place in heaven guaranteed when at the moment that you trust in Christ for salvation but then uh, 1 Corinthians 3 talks about how we all must appear before the judgment seat of Christ now in Ephesians 1 it talks about when Christ was raised from the dead he was uh, God raised him from the dead set him in his own right hand far above all principality and power and made him to be the head of all things the head over the church and he is the fullness uh, and then he has the church which is the fullness of his body the fullness of him that filleth all in all and uh, the book of Job we're told that the heavens are unclean in his sight Revelation 12 says that one third of the angels rebelled with Satan when he decided that he would be like the Most High God. So all that tells us that one third of the heavenly positions were vacated, or I shouldn't say vacated. They're going to be. They're not going to just leave. Uh, one third of the heavenly positions. Uh, Revelation 12:7 says that Michael and his angels fight against the devil and his angels and the devil and his angels are cast out neither was there any more place found for them in heaven so when one-third of the angels rebelled against God they're still in those positions but halfway through the tribulation period they are going to be kicked out of those positions by Michael and his angels and then the church the body of Christ is going to be placed into those positions that's why Ephesians 1 says that the fullness of his body which filleth all in all. Jesus Christ, since He is far above all principality and power, He has the ability, the authority, to place us, members of the body of Christ, in those positions. And it's just sort of like you think of a president comes in, he has his cabinet uh, once he's elected. He has the authority to put whoever he wants to in these positions. And that's what Jesus Christ is going to do. He has the authority with Satan and his forces kicked out of those positions to put us, the body of Christ, and he's going to fill all those positions uh, that Satan and his forces were kicked out of. He's going to fill them all with the church, the body of Christ. And he's going to use wisdom. He's going to figure out which ones people should be in. There's, uh, there's thrones, dominions, principalities, powers, mights, and every name that is named. And so when, it, when you talk about getting a crown, really your crown is, it's not, a lot of times people think of a reward being, you know, a big mansion, a lot of money. You think of material stuff, but really the reward, it's in a spiritual realm, so the reward is spiritual. Not to say that you won't have those things, I don't know how that works, but the main thing is that you receive a spiritual reward you will receive a crown that is because uh, Paul talks about that I fought a good fight I finished the course I have kept the faith henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness so you receive a crown that is equal to your position if you think of, for example, the in England, you got the Queen of England, and you've, you know, she has a crown, 
well, people under her would have a crown, but it wouldn't be as glorious as her crown. Or when you look in the Bible, you'll see there's a king. They win the war against this king, and the king's crown is put on the uh, Israel's crown, uh, head, the king of Israel's head, because he won the battle. The higher up, the better your crown is going to be, and it's going to reflect your position, whether it be a throne, a dominion, a principality, a power, or a might, or in every name that is named. You will receive a crown showing that position. Just like you have today, it may be a little, you know, it's not really a crown, but if you're working for a, a business that's uh, customer service oriented, then you're going to wear a uniform probably, or something that, a name tag, or something that identifies you as a worker there. So that when they're walking through the store, immediately they know, oh, you work here, I can ask you a question. That's how it's going to be. So the crown that you receive is going to be based on, uh, is going to be your position in heavenly places. Now, 1 Corinthians 3, starting in verse 11, talks about the judgment seat of Christ. It says that your work is going to be judged by Christ to see of what sort it is. If it is wood, hay, or stubble, it will be burned, and you will suffer a loss of reward, but your soul is still saved. If it is gold, silver, or precious stones, then you receive a reward according to what you what kind of work it was. The more you allow Christ to work in your inner man, build up sound doctrine in your inner man, and allow Christ to live in you, the more you do that, the greater the position will be in heavenly places. And so when you ask the question, uh, how can we earn or lose crowns in heaven? The way you do it is you allow you read God's Word and believe it you get the sound doctrine especially of Paul's epistles built up in your inner man you go through trials you allow the love of God to come through you as you go through those trials and the more you do that the more you learn and you uh, and you earn a better crown if you do not do those things then if you just decide, like most people do, if you believe a, the clear gospel, but most people, after they do that, they get right into the flesh. They're water baptized, so now they're emphasized on the flesh. They try to serve God out of the energies of their flesh. They say, I make Jesus the Lord of my life. I invite Jesus into my heart. I turn from my sins. And sure, they'll give God credit for things, but really it's because of their decision, their dedication, and their willpower that they ended up doing these things for God. When your attitude is all about serving God in your flesh, then the result is your work is of the flesh. And since Romans 7:18 says that in your flesh dwelleth no good thing, Philippians 3:21 talks about how we have vile flesh. Because of that, then the result is that you will lose your reward. You will do be be doing things that are considered wood, hay, and stubble, and uh, you will not receive that reward. So, now your soul is still saved. In 1 Corinthians 3, I think verse 15 tells you that, because your soul is tried by fire as well, and your soul is purged by the blood of Christ, and so that will survive the fire uh, because of you are your life is hid with Christ and God, and since Christ's soul is perfect then God sees you as perfect as well, and so you receive the gift of eternal life. But the reward is based upon sound doctrine built up in the inner man, the love of God coming through you to others, and it's all about attitude. It's about Christ living in you as opposed to you trying to serve God in the energies of your flesh. And so if you uh, allow Christ to live in you, you build up the sound doctrine in the inner man, then henceforth there is laid up for you a crown of righteousness and that crown is better the more you do that it's a higher position in heaven and the less you do that if you don't do it at all then you end up losing a reward but your soul is still safe so then you end up being the every name that is named i'm not sure you know we're not told in the dispensation of grace other than that reference of paul i think where it talks about the crown i could be wrong but i think that's the only reference 
a lot of times people say about losing or gaining crowns, they get that from the book of Revelation because you'll see, I think it's the elders, the 24 elders and the four beasts who are seen somewhere around Revelation 4, Revelation 5, something like that, where they, uh, they are laying down their crown at the feet of Jesus. And uh, you'll hear that in Christianity, and it comes from those verses where people will say, Oh, and I get a crown, I'm just going to lay it down at the feet of Jesus. What I think that is, first off, the 24 elders would be uh, the top rulers, the 12, the, they'd be 12 thrones. In Matthew 19, Jesus told the apostles that those which have followed him in the regeneration shall sit on 12 thrones judging the 12 tribes of Israel. So I believe there are 12 thrones in God's earthly governmental structure in which the 12 apostles sit on Oh, and they will be over Israel, and then Israel is over the Gentiles. And then in the heavenly places, then uh, we're not given the details, but I can assume that this structure is the same way, that there are 12 thrones uh, for men to sit on, and they're the top people in the heavenly places, and then people are under them. And that's why in Revelation 4 and Revelation 5, you have 24 elders. Uh, Twelve of them are the apostles in the earthly kingdom judging the twelve tribes of Israel and twelve would be from the body of Christ. So those are people, the beasts, those are the cherubims. They were, uh, Ezekiel 1 talks about that. And from Ezekiel 28 you learn that Satan was the anointed cherub that covereth. So there were four cherubs, one on each side of the Lord's throne, protecting that throne. And then you had uh, Satan or Lucifer as covering the throne, the fifth cherub. But he has fallen uh, because he became prideful, he rebelled. So the four beasts are the cherubs that were created by God, whereas the 24 elders are actual men. And when they cast down their crowns at Jesus' feet at the throne of God, then that would be a reference to the 24 elders, to men doing that. So I think that's how people get the idea that they can cast down their throne, their, cast down their crown at the feet of Jesus. But I take that to mean, first off, of course, we take the Bible literally, and I do believe they are literally casting their crown at the throne of Jesus because, at the feet of Jesus, because that's what the verse says. So we're going to believe what the verse says. But uh, I take that to mean not that they're giving up their crown because Jesus gave them those positions. I mean, if the, he says in the regeneration, you will sit on 12 thrones judging the 12 tribes of Israel. And if you give up your crown, I mean, you give up that position, well, somebody's got to do it. I think they're giving up their crown in the sense of saying that I don't deserve this. It's by the blood of Christ that I have salvation. It's by Christ living in me that I followed sound doctrine and got this position. So it was really Christ doing the good works through me. And since it was Christ doing it, then I lay down my crown at the feet of Jesus. And not that they're giving up that position, but just in recognition and recognizing that Jesus Christ is the one who earned that crown for them. So uh, I think that's what that's a reference to. They don't actually give up their crown. I think Jesus says, well, I understand that, but somebody's got to sit on the throne and you got to have a crown to show that you're one of the 12 sitting on the throne. So here's your crown back, but thank you for acknowledging that I'm the one who did the work through you. That's what I believe happened. I know that's not what, there's no detail of what happens in scripture, but that's uh, just my guess. So, how do you earn or lose crowns? Uh, simply, it's just getting that sound doctrine in the inner man, uh, allowing Christ to live through you, suffering for uh, believing that sound doctrine through the flesh persecuting you, through others, through religion, uh, through family, through friends. They uh, persecute you for taking a stand for the truth. And um, then the love of God is shed abroad in your hearts through those trials. Romans 5 through, through 3 through 5 tells us that. And then the result is that Christ lives in us. And um, 
then you get a bigger crown. If you do not do those things, you lose your reward, as 1 Corinthians 3 says, uh, in verse 15, but your soul is still saved because you did allow Christ to save your soul, you just didn't allow Christ to work through you after you were saved. Okay, then the second part of the question was, uh, what good fruits bring you closer to the light in heaven? Um, you don't really, first off, bring it closer to the light. I think that's more of a new age or Eastern mysticism type idea. In John 1, we are told that Jesus is the true light. Light is capitalized with an L. He is the light. And the book of Revelation, we're told toward the end there, I believe chapter 21 or 22, one of those, that in the New Jerusalem, there is no need for the sun or moon to light the city because the Lamb Himself is the light. And so the light really is, and John 1 talks about, when we talk about Jesus Christ being the true light, John 1 says that He is the light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. And then you've got over Matthew 5, I believe it is, maybe around verse 16, 17, Jesus told his disciples, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. So I think the light thing, a lot of times people, you'll hear of these people who die and go to heaven or go on and then they come back to life and they all talk about seeing this great light and embracing the light and all that. I think all that really a lot of that is mysticism not to say that that's not true that there isn't a light but it's just what we need to understand is God's design and you see this from Revelation you see it from Paul's epistles and Ephesians 2 uh, God's design is to live in you and Isaiah 65 God says heaven is at verse 1 he says heaven is my throne and earth is my footstool where is the house you have built for me? And when, uh, when so uh, Solomon, got to get the name right, when Solomon built the temple for the Lord, he even acknowledges in the dedicatory prayer, which I believe is 2 Kings 6, he says that uh, the heavens, maybe 1 Kings 6, yeah, it's probably 1 Kings 6. Anyway, he says that the heavens cannot contain God much less this house I have built. And over in Zechariah 5 or Zechariah 6, it says the branch is going to build the temple of the Lord, which is a reference to Jesus Christ. Basically, what God's design is, is He wants to dwell with men. He will tabernacle among men. They will be His people and He will be their God. People are God's house, not a structure, but people. And that's why we're told, Paul says over 1 Corinthians 6, ye are the temple of the Holy Ghost. God's design is to dwell in the midst of people. And since Jesus Christ is the light, what it means is that when you are living in eternity, Christ lives in you. Whether you are the body of Christ and the dispensation of grace, or you're the bride of Christ, which is Israel. Christ lives in you, meaning that He works through you for all eternity. And Israel's uh, old, uh, in the new covenant that God promises to Israel, in Ezekiel 36, He says, I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and judgments, and ye shall do them. Christ lives through the body of Christ, he lives through the bride of Christ for all eternity. And he is the light. So when you ask about the light, actually, you've already got the light. And if you're saved, uh, <coughs> and the light will dwell within you for all eternity. That's what makes the glorious body. You look at the angels when they would come on earth, like in the book of Matthew, the, usually the first thing they say is, fear not. Well, the reason they fear is because the angels glow. They have this bright light about them. Well, the reason they glow is because they have the glory of God. They have the glory of God in them, uh, working through them, being a, you know, being working for the Lord. And that's how we're going to be. We're going to be 
beings of light, not because of ourselves, but because of Christ living in us. We're told today in 2 Corinthians, I believe it's chapter 4, it says, We have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. But when we are clothed with our glorified flesh and we're in eternity, then we have this treasure in celestial vessels, and then people can see the light of God coming through us. So the light really is just God's glory, and because God dwells within saved man for all eternity, uh, the way you come toward the light is just, it's still the same as the way you would get uh, a reward in heaven. It's that when you get sound doctrine built up in your inner man and you allow Christ to live in you, then there is more, there will be more light coming through you for all eternity. And so when you ask the question, what good fruits bring you closer to the light? Uh, that's the answer. It's the sound doctrine built up in your inner man. When you look in the book of Matthew and Jesus talks about how uh, by, your fruit, by their fruits ye shall know them. And you read that, a lot of times people think of its actions, but it's not really. Uh, when you look at the context and read those verses carefully, you can see that the fruits is the doctrine. If they have good fruit, then that means they have sound doctrine being lived out through their inner man, through, through them. If they have false doctrine, then that's considered bad fruit and, they, and that will be destroyed. So the answer to your question of what good fruits bring you closer to the light in heaven is really the same answer as how you can earn crowns in heaven. It's that you get sound doctrine built up your, your inner man, you allow Christ to live in you and the love of God to come through you as you go through trials. And the result is you will have more light or more of God's glory coming through you for all eternity. And that uh, the good fruit is the sound doctrine that comes through you. And so then that brings you not really closer to the light. There isn't just this one light that's in heaven, but rather because Christ lives in you, whether you're the body of Christ or the bride of Christ, then the light is going to be in you and you'll have that glorified flesh and there will be more glory coming through you the more you have the sound doctrine built in you. So you don't really get closer to the light. The light is already, the light is in you right now. It's just people can't see it because it's in earthen vessels unless they see God's love coming through you. God's love really is the light. And the more of that love that's displayed, the greater and brighter that light is. And it will be seen in your glorified flesh um, in eternity. So uh, it doesn't, you're not really brought closer to the light. You just have more of the light in you. Uh, read John 1, those first, I don't know, 14 verses. And you'll see that it talks about the that John the Baptist was not the light, but Jesus Christ was the light, and he's the one that lighteth every man that cometh into the world. And the more you have the sound doctrine built up in you, the more of that light you will have coming through you for all eternity uh, for others to enjoy, and for yourself as well, and for God to be glorified. Thanks for watching. Thank you for the question, Sonia.